Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Psychedelic here. This is a continuation of my last update here. This is sort of a part two uh, in which I'm going to be sharing more archival LPs plus three private press records. Well, at least two of them are. One's a smaller label, almost a private press, but they all kind of fit in the same category, so I kind of wanted to present them that way. Um, figured I had enough time to shoot tonight, so I figured I'll... Uh, shoot it tonight and upload it in the morning, but um, if you guys didn't catch my message on my last video, I will disclaim it here. Um, if you guys don't see a video from me within like four weeks to four years, no, <laughs> four weeks to like a month down the road, um, here on YouTube anyway, um, it's normal. Um, just taking a little break on the YouTube side of things. Um, I'm much more active on Instagram kind of my go-to. If you guys want to follow me on there, I've never asked you guys to follow me there, but I'll uh, put the picture, my name, what I look like on there. If you guys want to follow me on there, I will be active on there. But uh, yeah, taking a break. Up. I usually do that on all social media that I've been on, you know, especially Facebook. Like I haven't been on there in a while and people are just kind of losing their minds right now. It's especially more apparent, you know, this year. So just got to take a break from all that chaos, but anyways, um, that's why I'm here to present the goods to keep us alive in these insane times. So we're going to start off with the archival LPs. This is one that I picked up on on eBay. Um, I just hit newly listed under Psych, and then uh, this was like one of the very first that popped up, and this had been on my want list, you know, probably almost nearly five years or so. This is Beauregard Ajax with Def Priscilla. Um, of course, this never came out at the time, but this is like the only vinyl pressing out there so far. This came out in 2006 by Shadox, and this is a uh, limited edition of 300 copies. Um, there's a whole big backstory to this record. Um, I read up on most of it. There's like five paragraphs worth or more. Um, they're based out of the West Coast, California area, I believe. They originated like maybe north of LA, um, which I don't know which suburb that would be, but it's generally in that area. But they would have to travel to LA to record this. And the owner behind the Delphi label, I think that's the label, Delphi, um, it was the same guy who produced all the Bobby Fuller 4 LPs. Um, I forget his name at the moment, I apologize, but he was actually producing this band. Um, I don't remember how it all came about, but he was definitely not ready for their sound. Obviously, coming into 1967, you know, the whole scene had evolved into hippie dumb. And the producer, he's probably like a 40 year old dude, you know, working with like, you know, male, male artists at the time, you know, male vocalists, or, you know, that's what I like to imagine anyway. But, uh, you know, the Bobby Fuller type. And so when this band came along, um, they recorded this primarily in 67, but sort of in like early 68 too. Um, and it's not a fully completed record either. Um, they couldn't get back into the studio to record, overlay some overdubs or finish up any vocal takes. And they kind of left like the first take vocal cuts on here on some spots and just little pieces to, uh, you know, complete the record never came about, and so that's kind of why, you know, decades later got discovered in the 90s um, in the vaults of Delphi, and later got put onto like a cassette dub, and here we are. So then they came along a vinyl pressing, got a little more exposure, so um, the full thing is up on YouTube if you guys want to check it out. Uh, musically, it's basically, you know, very West Coast folk rock flavored, but yet with that kind of psychedelic tinge here and there. Um, there are some effects thrown about, but if it had a little more uh, 
textual things moving about. I think it could have been a lot more tighter, but obviously. Um, it has a special charm to it, you know, for what it is, being incomplete. Um, giving us some highlights, so the opening track, Loneliness is a Sometime Thing, is tomorrow, Thursday. Def Priscilla, the title track, is really good. It's kind of a UK pop-inspired track. It's got some great vocal harmonies, very much UK-inspired. Um, and then the closing track, Kaleidoscope, as well, is a very nice, upbeat tune. A lot of it's pretty mellow, pretty laid-back and sleepy-sounding, but um, definitely a definite grower, for sure. And um, yeah, this is one to check out. Kind of hard to find now on vinyl. Um, I was really lucky I found this under 100 bucks. And I was just like, take my money now. Because <laughs> I just have not been seeing it pop up lately and I'm really wanting to copy. So, um, obviously, you're going to hear some like a uh, little bit of tape damage here and there in the mix, which is kind of natural to, you know, have happen. But um, the thing delivers, the record really delivers, their ideas really come together and they're all original tracks and really worth hearing for yourself. So, Beauregard Ajax, Def Priscilla, check her out. Now, as far as like uh, more recent archival LPs, this one actually came out this year. Um, thanks to Tyler, Papa Duke Tyler on Instagram, we communicate a lot. And Sundays recently has released like four new archival records that just recently came out. And out of the four, I've only listened to two others. Um, the covers may look intriguing, but I think it's one is Morning Rain and The Hard Keys. I could not get into those, but um, yeah, I, I don't recommend those. I think this one's the best of the four they released this year so far. The Eighth Wonders of the World. So you could say this is kind of a semi-archival thing. They actually released two singles, which are included on here. But it also contains alternate takes of uh, the one single, plus like unissued, previously unissued tracks never heard before. So just one glance at that cover, you know, looks pretty, it's pretty striking, but uh, it's not necessarily full-blown psychedelic. It's not going to bend your mind that quickly, but again, this is one that kind of grew on me once I purchased this. I spun it a couple times in full so far, and streamed it before I bought it, so, um, yeah, I was a little unsure initially because there were some horn arrangements and some Baroque touches, but then they kind of venture off into some, like, um, they kind of have, like, this kind of surf rock edge to the early tracks, because most of the tracks were recorded from 64 to roughly 68, so as the band evolved, you know, they first started with that kind of surf rock edge, kind of a coastal sound. Uh, even though they were based out of New York City, it's very much a West Coast flavor. Um, and then eventually they crawl into some like garage psych leanings, and uh, pretty good. It kind of reminds me of the band The Id, um, Jerry Cole's group, The Id. Just stylistically, just how you know frantic kind of sounds, and uh, just how the vocalist kind of goes haywire sometimes. It just kind of reminded me of that. But my favorite tracks, Susie Got the Word. It's kind of a repetitive pop tune, but I love the harmonies in it. And the original version of Summer Dreamin'. It's got some nice uh, backing vocals, nice horn arrangements. Very much should have been a pop hit. And it was released on 45 initially, but they do have the alternate take, which I don't think is as good, but uh, they have the whole backstory here on the back, so... Um, yeah, I, I guess it's a Beat Rocket issue, but it's produced by Sundazed. I think uh, Modern Harmonic also has a hand in this project, too. It's on orange vinyl. Meh. <laughs> Not huge on colored vinyl, but it's the only way I can acquire it. So, uh, if you're into those kind of archival things, I mean, definitely give it a listen. Um, they do have it the full thing on Bandcamp, so... You know, check out a few tracks, see if you like it. I think for any pop rock fans, you know, that love harmonies and kind of a coastal, you know, kind of surf undertones mixed in with pop psych, 
I think you'll dig it. So pretty good. And I'll show the hype sticker here. Get a shot of that. And uh, that does it for those. So moving on to the private press releases. So this is actually the very first one that got me into the whole world of private press kingdom, if you will. Um, I don't remember how I stumbled upon this exact one, but I remember early on, I think I had this in my Discogs want list for like probably eight years. Could never find it like under 30 bucks, which, you know, I didn't want to pay that much. So finally found a listing. This guy was kind of dropping the price like five bucks every week or something. And he finally brought it down to 10 bucks. I was like, you got me there, boy. So I picked up on uh, Vulcan, Meet Your Ghost. Yeah, the release date on this is very confusing. Uh, there's so many different pressings and different reissues. Every original copy will say a reissue in the top corner there. So you never really know which edition you have. There's so many bootlegs and reissues done by the man himself, Lyle Stees, who uh, was behind this project. It was like a one-man band, basically. Um, he might have had another performer on the drum section on the second side, but I'm not entirely sure on that one. Um, don't know the full backstory entirely, but this was my first exposure to some, you know, self-penned releases. And uh, it's actually a kind of semi-local record, too, based out of Spencer, Iowa. As you can tell, he dedicates this one to Hendrix. Although he doesn't sound like Hendrix, you can definitely tell this guy, you know, probably smoked a shit ton of weed and tried emulating, you know, Hendrix a little bit, but... Yeah, this is very acid-fried, basement production sounding stoner rock <laughs> with a punk edge. Um, you could say it's psychedelic. He definitely uses like some effects, you know, some very analog stinged effects on here, um, especially on the A side. You can definitely tell it's like some sort of home recording on this, you know, very scuzzy, buzzy tape machine that he's using. And he plays the drums, plays the bass, plays the guitar, does the vocals, sometimes out of key, but, you know, again, being a self pen release, being a one-man band, gotta give him props. At least he's, you know, trying to acquire his own dream by, you know, releasing his um, album on such a shoestring budget. But uh, it's still pretty interesting, even though it does have some flaws in the mix no doubt. I mean, especially on B-side, there's a time where there's so many dropouts, you can barely make out what he's playing at times, but definitely an interesting release. So, Lyle Stees, Vulcan, Meet Your Ghost. Um, it's definitely an aesthetic for the right listener, but I'm super ha happy I got this finally. Um, definitely hasn't had my first exposure to uh, the private press world, so um, I, I think I already mentioned it, but yeah, it's kind of got this kind of punk attitude about it, you know. It was recorded between 78 and 1981, but if you try to figure out like all the different pressings this has, it's gonna you're probably gonna develop a migraine afterwards, so <laughs> um, I think I have like a third variation that came out in like 85, but then you see um, releases from 82, 81. 78 so um, very confusing as far as like the pressings as far as that goes but uh, moving on so this one I picked up roughly at the same time a fellow viewer of mine I think it was Dave or David somebody out there I forget your name but um, you always watch my videos and I appreciate it um, you told me you picked this record up and I picked it up like literally the next day without even you know, having you leave that comment, like it didn't even register with me, we picked up on um, Goldenrod. Um, this is actually a reissue, but it's on the Chartmaker label, it's a reproduction, I think this came out in 2013. Um, I don't think it's a private release, I think Chartmaker was a small label, but there were a few releases on there. Um, Darius, which this band also backed up, um, who was a singer-songwriter. I probably prefer that album over this one, however, um, this one's still pretty cool. Um, it's got kind of a backstory to it, so basically these three men, 
I, th I believe all three of them were involved with Kurt Betcher and the ballroom slash the Millennium because they do a variation of Karmic Dream Sequence. Obviously, it was on the Millennium album. But this is a totally different variation of that, kind of more freeform, very spatial, kind of cosmic sounding. But uh, having four tracks, it's obviously oriented in that kind of jam band style. Pretty crudely recorded, and you can probably tell these guys probably recorded this in like one or two night sessions at the most. It's kind of what it sounds like. Um, although it does kind of sound pretty rushed and pretty stoned out, um, the results are still pretty pretty solid. Um, I wouldn't say it's entirely blues based, but you can tell these guys probably listen to obviously the heavy power trios of the time, you know, very Hendrixy and very Cream-esque, but definitely a distinctful sound, much of their own, so pretty identical to the original label. Kind of like the uh, minimalism there. Um, solid pressing, and I found this for like 15 bucks online, and nowadays with reissues of albums of this caliber, it's kind of nice to pick those up for like 15 bucks. So, I had to scoop it up. It was kind of a splurge, so it, it was a good splurge, though. And then finally, with this last one here, this is probably one I'm going to talk about a little bit. It's got quite a history to it. So, uh, there's a channel here on YouTube. I don't know how you pronounce the name, if it's Ahones or Ah Ones. However you want to pronounce it, I'll put his picture here. But he's probably got, if he's ripping all these records from his turntable, he's got one hell of a collection because it's just a bunch of obscure private records. And maybe it's one of those accounts that occasionally gets banned off YouTube for like, you know, however many months and then always comes back and rips them all again. So whoever you are, man, you are doing a good deed. <laughs> because I was just checking his playlist one evening and I uh, was checking this record out and I had definitely seen this cover online before and I kind of figured maybe it's like some kind of West Coast pop site group or something. But given the later date from 75 and looking at the cover and the story a bit more, I was like, uh, there's a little more to this. And then I was listening to it and I was like, wow, there is uh, definitely something going on here. This is Homestead and Wolf with Our Times, which originally came out in 75. Uh, private release, and this was basically like a youth group, um, kind of involved with like the Christian church. Um, it first came together by the pastor, who I think is this fellow here, Ernie, I think his name is. And he collected all these, well, they don't look like younger kids here in that getup, but um, collected these kids. I don't know if they played their own instruments because the uh, backing musicians on here is actually the Wrecking Crew. We have Hal Blaine, amongst many others, who I can't name offhand, but uh, the only one uh, performing in this is actually Joanne Avery, who is also leading the group, and she's also writing and arranging with the Wrecking Crew. Multi-instrumentalist, vocalist, very good vocalist. She has like these angelic pipes, man. But uh, if I had to describe this record just in like one sentence, the thing that came to mind to me was like if the UK band Trees had relocated to like South Dakota or something, somewhere out in the desolate area, Wyoming, South Dakota, this would be the end result. <laughs> That's kind of how I described it. You know, it's very, it's got a lot of rural tinges, um, very folk inspired, got these kind of ballad-like tracks. On the original release, there was like one psychedelic cut, you could say, Your Freedom's in Question. But it's not strictly a psychedelic record. It's never, it was never meant to be one. But this reissue includes two bonus tracks, which are some of the more stronger psychedelic tracks. Mary Jane, which I do recommend you checking out. And Beat of the Drum, it's kind of a more upbeat rocker. It doesn't rock out a whole lot on here, it's very much kind of baroque kind of folk inspired in that kind of rural area. But the songwriting, man, is just superb. Um, you start off with the first track, Slow Down. That one reels you in, man. There's some nice slide guitar going on. Um, and like I said, Joanne's vocals really soar on this one, really make it worth listening. 
just for her vocals alone. See the Children Die? I believe that's the track on here. It kind of relates to uh, the Wounded Knee Massacre. Yeah, the record dives into like topics of their time and just all their different concerns like a youth group probably would. Um, they kind of dive into that and this does contain uh, three different inserts actually. Uh, the lyric insert, which is very helpful, even though you can you can understand what they're saying, but it's kind of just interesting to see like what they're all writing about being original tracks, you know. Ernie himself was actually involved with a few Wrecking Crew members being with the Rip Chords back in the early 60s, I believe. And so he had some Hollywood connections there. And um, as he was a youth group minister, he collected these kids here and they kind of had their own sound. I think they played their own instruments. And this is like who they were before the album came along. Sound of Celebration? Yeah. This is kind of like a promotional poster here. Lots of liner notes. Talking about uh, how they titled the record Our Times because, you know, you got to think of the, you got to think of the era. 75, you know, Watergate was coming around the corner. Um, you had things like, I mean, obviously Wounded Knee was a big, you know, they had to grasp onto some kind of you know, history to talk about. Um, Vietnam was close to ending. So lots of ties to like uh, social commentary while also very potent and very much uh, strong in their songwriting quality. And um, they can really play too. So highly recommend this one. This one kind of really, really changed my uh, perspective on a few sounds that I'm not quite familiar with, but uh, definitely an Asset Archive type of release, and I, someone that comes to mind right away that I think would enjoy this is Dom, Seeking a Thread. I, I would imagine he would like this one, so I don't know if he has it, but uh, certainly up his wheelhouse. So, with that said, uh, thanks for tuning in again. Um, not, not a whole lot coming in the mail. I don't, yeah, I think I got one coming in, I guess. Don't know when the next video will come about, but like I said, just uh, keep in touch with me on Instagram. I'm always on there, so um, till then, we shall see you later.